welcome everyone to Wonder Women in Action. It's so wonderful to see so many lovely faces this evening. It's not often that we get an opportunity to be in a setting as amazing as this setting. I feel truly blessed. Wonder Women is an organization that is trying to involve women at their core in terms of your own awareness of women's issues, in terms of your feelings of empowerment, connecting with your feelings of disempowerment. We try to do events that are in some way bringing together a group of women that may not always meet each other, that are unrelated from different fields, different colors, different races, different ages and show that we are all the same. We are women. We are women here in this world. We are men supporting women. We are individuals that cannot be categorized by any gender. We are not here to genderize. We are human beings. We do events that encourage you to meet someone and to feel comfortable in that setting, in our setting, that that person is going to greet you the same way they would greet a friend. So I encourage in the first segment of the program, which is the networking segment, for you to bring items that you can show about your work, to bring items that you can sell, to bring items that might help you because you don't know what the other person that you're standing next to is capable of. Earlier this year, or I should say by the end of last year, we launched a spotlight platform which is there to help women to connect with each other on the web. It's a beautiful platform on Facebook that I hope you've had a chance to take a look at. And it's a platform that can be used by anyone here to meet others through me as well. You're free to reach out to me and say, Aaliyah, I'd like to get in touch with this person on Spotlight. Now, anytime we're doing an event is an opportunity for women to connect, right? But we do different kinds of events. We do events that are awareness building. We've done events about cancer. We've done events about domestic violence. We've done events about cultural awareness, uh, bringing Bollywood to you. And for Wonder Women in Action, we are interviewing women who are real life Wonder Women in our community, who are making a difference and having their stories be told to you and giving you an opportunity to meet with them. Linda, I'd like to begin my interview with you. And we will be talking about breaking gender stereotypes. So Linda, let's begin with the first question. Tell me a little bit about who is Linda Stein and what has been some of the gender stereotypes you have faced? I was born in the Bronx in a very traditional family. And I learned that the boy was supposed to be smarter, better, and stronger than the girl. And since I was a good little girl, I learned my lesson very well. And although I was a talented athlete, very talented athlete, and the captain of all the teams, I learned, I taught myself to throw the bowling ball into the alley gutter and the ping pong or tennis ball into the net so the boy always won. Now I see somebody with open mouth. <laughs> How many here? 
did just that so the boys, when you were children, would win. No way. <laughs> okay, couples say yes. Good for those that say no. And I learned early on how to defer to the boy. And I think that probably contributed in some way to my becoming a lesbian, although one doesn't know for sure. I think it was mostly a political decision or a cultural decision that made me feel that I can only be really authentic if I weren't deferring to men. That's for a start. Okay, and that, that is a unique, for many people, a unique start. Could be. I go around the country lecturing and there are lots of hands that go up when I say yes, when they say yes, I did that too. But fortunately, I think the um, younger generation is off to a different start, and I'm delighted. I agree with you, absolutely. It's, it's uh, in, in many ways, the, it is a better step, start for the younger generation. Absolutely. We, we have a ways to go. As a result of your own experiences, how do you use art to transform social consciousness and promote activism for gender injustice or for gender justice against injustice? Um, I started a nonprofit corporation called Have Art Will Travel for Gender Justice. And that is the umbrella group for a traveling exhibit three traveling exhibits, actually, that are represented in this room. One is called The Fluidity of Gender, and that's represented by the silver catalog over there, which you could look at, called The Fluidity of Gender. And it goes around the country now to 24 museums and universities. It just came from the Andrews Art Museum, uh, in North Carolina, and it's now at Penn State. And the ones that you see on mannequins over here um, are ones that are wearable sculptures. And when I go out to lecture on these issues of gender justice, after my lecture, we go into a reception in the gallery, and local people students if it's a museum or community members if it's a, um, um, a town without a university will try on the sculpture. It goes on the body and will create a skit, a dance, or a poem about masculinity and femininity or the continuum between the binaries of the two and bullying and bigotry. So it really, gender justice go, touches anti-Semitism, uh, racism, uh, ableism, classism, homophobia. It goes into all the isms and reasons people bully other people. So Fluidity of Gender is one of the three series you see in this room. Another at the wall behind you and off to the side are tapestries that will travel again around the country. Um, I should tell you the name. It's called Holocaust Heroes, Fierce Females. And this is about bravery. And you know, Aliga, um, I've come to feel that bravery really is not just in life and death situations, but in mundane day-to-day -day situations. So what does it take for someone to stick up for a victim to a bully. That's bravery. What does it take to go off and do something that you might be ostracized for in your community? You might lose friends. That's bravery. So Holocaust heroes and focusing in on the women that saved lives is a chance for me to talk about bravery. 
And the third in this room is a series called I Am the Environment, My Gender, My Nature. And nature here is kind of a double entendre. One's own nature, authenticity, and nature. How do the two connect? So those are the three traveling exhibits that uh, I'm working on. And uh, the first has been going to 24 museums and galleries around wow. the country. So that's wonderful. That is wonderful. That is impressive. And it's very, very important work. Thank you. You know, they say that 4.5% of women in Fortune 500 companies is the big whopping number, right, of women that hold positions as compared to men. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this starts from the level of children where boys and girls are dealing with issues of, this is what I can do as a boy, this is what I can do as a girl. It doesn't matter how good a girl is doing, largely in numbers, mm -hmm. it is not translating to the education system moving it forward into, into the workplace. What mm -hmm. is what is some of the you know changes you've seen, you know, with with that scenario, in through all the schools you've been visiting? Is there is there a change for the better in regards to that? I think there is change, but it's incremental. And what does it take for women to? To be empowered, really, it's, it's very hard. You know, in the art world, Aaliyah, it's particularly hard. At the top galleries in New York City, let's say, female artists exhibit 28%, 30%. The higher up you get, the lower the percentage of female artists. And why is that? because there's an old boys network. And that continues. So if you take any top gallery, Gagosian is a major gallery here, look on the website of Gagosian and see the artists that that gallery represents. And you'll find that maybe 20% are women. If you take Mary Boone, a woman, go on the website, look at who she's exhibiting. Easy enough, it's open to the public. Maybe 23%, 25% are women. And that was after marches in the street where women protested the fact that Mary Boone had no woman in her gallery. Mm -hmm. It was entirely men. So now she has 20, 25, 20, 27%. I don't know what the latest figure is. 18 to 20% of Congress is female. Oh, 18 to 20%. Give me a break. Right? It should be 51%. Wonder Woman, as she was created in 1941 to 47, where she converted the bad guys, she got them to, to be good, but she never killed. So I chose her as a role model. <laughs>